Andrew's invention may just be the solution to beating peak hour traffic. It's a flying car and it's no longer just a pie in the sky idea. It made perfect sense to me that everybody should be flying around. Actuators, one, two, three, four on, recharge. So it's a huge step for this country. So will I be uh, catching one of these to the shops one day? Oh, absolutely. Maybe sooner than everybody thinks. For Andrew Moore, it all comes down to this moment. Battery contact with left and right on, free charge off. Motor displays, they look normal. Ground idle. Yep, ready for ground idle. Five years in the making. Motor seven, motor eight. Motor displays look normal, battery displays look normal to me, you? Yep, all good. A lifetime of dreams. Yes, yeah, so I've been coming up with design ideas since I was seven. Andrew and his team are finally testing his invention. A battery-powered aircraft that's about to take flight. It's an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. And that means it takes off and lands like a helicopter, but flies fast and efficiently like a plane. What's your vision? in an urban area? I'd say within the decade, you'll be able to go from somewhere not too far from your home to the rooftop car park on your nearest shopping centre. You could have a landing site which is over a, an intersection, not far from your home. That one small hover off the ground is one giant leap for Australian aviation. Forget your car, forget sitting in traffic, meet Vertia an electric aircraft that's set to revolutionise our daily commute. People put men on the moon, then of course it's not going to be that hard to fly you from one side of a city to the other. Like the Jetsons, they're a futuristic family. Ready for your push button finger exercises? And do you see this one starting in Q2? Andrew's wife Siobhan is, is co-founder of their company, AMSL Aero. Sitting in here, how does it feel? Um, it's incredible because it's, a, it's real um, and it's, um, you can see how this will be used in the future in Australia. To Siobhan has secured the funding to make exciting. Andrew's dream yeah, yeah. reality. About 27 million right now we've received in private investment. We've also received some great support from the Australian government. The government has already thrown in $16 million to help get it off the ground. Andrew was inspired by another Australian pioneer, Lawrence Hargrave, who created the box kite 130 years ago. But Vertia will be able to fly 1,000 kilometres at 300 k's an hour, making it the longest range electric aircraft of its type in the world. An emissions free form of transport that's far faster and safer than what you have today. And as you can see, this is the aeromatic, aeromedical cabin fit out um, for the aircraft. It's new technology CareFlight can't resist. The whole purpose of having these large doors is to allow ease of access of um, loading and unloading the patients. All right. Once approved by aviation regulator CASA, Vertia will become part of CareFlight's fleet. It poses an incredible future for aeromedical transport. The thing with these, are they're big and expensive, aren't they? They are. Um, so uh, to operate an aircraft like this, that's a twin engine aircraft, is extremely expensive. Um, you know, the, the innovation of the electric aircraft uh, means we can operate at a, at a far more cost effective level. Careflight uh, CEO Mick Fruin. It kind of sits between uh, the King Air aircraft you can see behind me here and a helicopter. So it does a bit of what each of those can do but certainly do it in a, in a much more cost-effective way. This will have similar operating costs to a road ambulance and it will mean that in so many parts of Australia, this, something like this could be 10 minutes away from picking you up from, from your home if you have an emergency. Australia has a chance to really make a mark and become an industry leader worldwide. Aerospace professor Jennifer Palmer believes air mobility for the public will take off, but will take time. I don't think it'll be within this decade because of all the things that need to happen to prepare for air advanced air mobility to be used in those circumstances. 
Professor Palmer says getting a new invention, especially an electric aircraft approved, won't be easy. It will be stringent and that's necessary because we're talking about the safety of the public and the safety of people operating or travelling in these vehicles. Who will be able to fly these? These will initially be flown by pilots with a, a special licence. Eventually, they'll even be remote controlled. That opens up a wide range of, of other applications and opportunities like fighting fires. With the maiden flight a success, work on a second prototype has begun. So what's the next stage of development when it comes to powering this, this up? Yeah, so the, the, the first one you saw used battery only, but the next one we're developing will use hydrogen and it will have hydrogen fuel tanks, which will be in the wingtips of the, the aircraft. Even if you think it's too good to be true, for Andrew and Siobhan, the only way is up. I always say there's a million ways why something won't happen, and there's a few ways it will. It's hard to fathom, isn't it? The goal is for Vertia to be used for aeromedical transport by 2026.